Hello crochet friend! Today I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step tutorial on how to crochet this stunning tulip inspired flower paw that turns into, yes, coasters. Look at that, isn't it stunning? This is another great idea to add to our surprise coaster collection. So I'm super, super excited about this one. And this one is perfect for spring and summer and also for gifting for Mother's Day, birthdays and other special occasions. So I really hope you liked today's video. So now let's learn how to make this stunning project. So for the coasters, I'm going to be using a 4 millimeters, 100% cotton yarn. For the tulip flowers, I'm going to be using light purple and dark purple. And for the leaves, I'm going to be using this green here. And with this yarn, I'm going to be using a 5.5 millimeters crochet hook. And for the plum paw, I'm going to be using this 3 centimeters t-shirt yarn in the shade yellow. And then with the t-shirt yarn, I'm going to be using a 7 millimeters crochet hook. And then I'm going to be using a tapestry needle. And lastly, a pair of scissors. So first, let's begin by making the tulip coasters. So go ahead and get the yarn you are using. In your hook, I'm going to be using a 5.5 millimeters. So leave enough yarn for the weave in. And you can choose if you want to do a magic ring or a chain four and slip stitch to make a ring. I'm going to be doing a magic ring. And then I'm going to chain one. And the chain one is not going to count as a stitch. And now into the ring, you're going to be working 10 half double crochets. So once you have the 10 half double crochets, you can go ahead and close the ring. And now you can slip stitch into the very first half double crochet. So now for round number two, chain one, not counting as a stitch. And then into the following stitch, you're gonna work two half double crochets into that same stitch, making the increase. And now you're going to work two half double crochets into every stitch around. So I got here into the last stitch, so I'm going to work two half double crochets into the last one. And then I'm going to be skipping the chain one and slip stitching into the first half double crochet. So now for round number three, chain one, not counting as a stitch, and then into the following stitch, work two half double crochets into the same stitch. And then into the next one, you're going to work just one half double crochet. And then you're going to repeat this all the way around. So into the following stitch, work two half double crochets. And then into the next one, work just one half double crochet. And now you can repeat this all the way around. So I got here into the last one. So into the last stitch, we are just working one half double crochet, following the pattern, skipping the chain one, and then we can slip stitch into the first half double crochet. So now for the last round, we are going to be making these shell details here at the top to mimic a tulip. So for round four, chain one, and then you're going to work one single crochet into the next four stitches. So one, two, three and four and then into the next one you're going to be working one half double crochet and then two double crochets all into the same stitch so one double crochet and then the second one and now into the following stitch work two double crochets so one and two and then into the same stitch work one half double crochet. So here's the first little corner that we are doing. So now we are going to slip stitch into the next two. So slip stitch into the next one and then slip stitch into the following one. So now into the next stitch work three half double crochets all into the same stitch. So one, two and three. So now slip stitch into the next two. 
and now we are going to be making the same as on this other side here into the following stitch so work one half double crochet and then two double crochets into that next stitch and now into the following one work two double crochets and then into the same one one half double crochet and now all you have to do is to single crochet all the way around until you find the very first single crochet so simply just work one single crochet into every stitch around so I got into my last stitch here and then I'm going to be skipping the chain one and slip stitching into the very first single crochet and now from here we can now fasten off I'm not going to chain one I'm just gonna cut off my yarn leaving a nice tail for the weave-in and now here I'm just gonna fasten off just pull and then you can make this nice and tight and now we can weave in both ends So this is how you make the coaster and you can now go ahead and make as many as you want I did steam block and here you can see the difference between not steaming and steaming so this one is not steamed and this one steamed so you can see how it looks like so the stitches are a little bit more tight and it looks more flat as well And now let me share with you all the measurements so side by side it's nine centimeters and then diagonally from here to here it's 11 centimeters and now top to bottom it's 10 centimeters so next up i'm going to show you how to crochet the leaf coasters so the very first thing you have to do for the leaf is to make the very first three rounds of the tulip exactly the same the first one with 10 stitches the second one with 20 and the third one with 30 stitches just follow the same steps as the tulip and then once you have it completed come back and then we are going to be doing the very last one to make the leaf shape so go ahead and get your green yarn and i'm going to be using the same hook 5.5 millimeters so here's round one with 10 stitches around so here's round number two with 20 stitches around and here's round number three now with 30 stitches around and now I'm going to show you how to make the last one so chain one and then work one single crochet into the next four stitches so one two three and four so now we have to make the point here so into the next stitch work one half double crochet and then into the following stitch work one half double crochet into the next work one double crochet so now into the next stitch you're going to be working two double crochets and then chaining two and then you have to slip stitch into the first chain into the back loop to make a pico and then back into the same stitch work two double crochets so all that you're going to be doing into the same stitch so now into the next stitch work one double crochet and then into the following one work one half double crochet into the next one work one half double crochet and now you can single crochet all the way around until you get to the first single crochet so now I got here at the end I'm going to work my last single crochet skipping the chain one and slip stitching into the very first single crochet now I'm going to cut off the yarn leaving a nice tail for the weave-in and now we can fasten off 
So now the last thing you have to do is to weave in both ends. So now here's the leaf now completed and you can also steam block it and I did for this other one so you can see the difference. And now you can go ahead and make as many leaves as you want. I am making two per pot. So now we are going to be making the plum pot and this is how this one turned out. I wanted to make a very different one so I've came up with this pattern. But you can also make a simpler one. So the other one that I have here looks like this. And I'm going to explain how you're going to be making this one as well. Super easy and quick. Look at that. So yeah, you're going to have two options. So for my second pot, I want to do in yellow. So I'm going to be using this one here. This is a t-shirt yarn. And with this yarn, I'm going to be using a seven millimeters crochet hook. So here at the beginning of the pot, we are going to be following rounds one and two of the coaster. So it's exactly the same. So you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to show you because it's using a different yarn, just so you can see. So leave enough yarn for the weave-in as you wish. Make a magic ring and then chain one. And now work into the ring 10 half double crochets. So once you have the 10 half double crochets, you can now close the ring nice and tight. And then you go into slip stitch into the first half double crochet. So now chain one, and then you're going to work two half double crochets into every stitch around. So once you have the 20 stitches around, go ahead and slip stitch into the first half double crochet. And now let's make the third one. It's going to be a little bit different. So chain one. And now you're going to back loop only and half double crochet all the way around. So go into the next stitch, back loop only and work just one half double crochet. Now into the next stitch, back loop only and one half double crochet. And now just follow that all the way around and you see that your work is going to turn backwards. Before I finish round three, I'm going to weave in this center end here. So I got here into my last stitch. This one is stitch number 20. Back loop only and work one half double crochet into that. And now you're going to slip stitch into the first half double crochet. And this is how it looks like. So now you have two options to continue the pot. You can fasten off and weave in and then reattach here at the bottom to continue the pot or you can use this same yarn and just continue the pot without having to reattach the yarn. The only thing you're going to be having is this little in relief stitch here, as you can see. I don't mind it, but if you do, you're gonna have to reattach your yarn. So when you finish round number three, your work is going to be just like this. So the first thing you wanna do, you just wanna pull a little bit up the loop on the hook. So that is the same height as your half double crochet, as you can see. So the loop is just a little bit looser. And then now you're going to turn your work clockwise, making sure that the yarn is at the back of your hook, as you can see. And now you're going to be choosing any of the loops, the front loops that we have left into round three. As you can see, we are going to be working into these in relief stitches here now at the back. So just choose any loop that it's close to the loop on the hook. I'm going to go for this one. So insert your hook. And then you're going to be catching the working yarn and then you're going to slip stitch just like this. Don't make it too tight here because you don't want this to pull your work. You want this to be really nice and flat here as well. So now we can continue the pot. So I'm going to chain one in which is not going to count as a stitch and then into the same stitch that we did the slip stitch we are going to work two half double crochets. So one and two. So now going to the next in relief stitch of the previous round here, you can clearly see them here, right? You can see the little loops going around. 
So go into the next one and work one half double crochet. And this is what we are going to be following all the way around. So into the next one, work two half double crochets. And then into the next one, just one half double crochet. And now repeat this all the way around. So now I got into my last stitch here. So I'm going to work just one half double crochet following the pattern. And now find that very first half double crochet and you're going to slip stitch. You can see that little in relief stitch here now. So now for the following two rounds, we are just working half double crochets around. So it's going to be pretty simple. So chain one, go into the next stitch, work one half double crochet. I need more yarn. <laughs> now go into the following one. Now we are using the entire stitch as well. So just one half double crochet and now work one half double crochet into every stitch around. So I got into my last stitch. So I'm just gonna work one half double crochet, the last one, and then I'm going to slip stitch into the first half double crochet. So here is round number five, now completed. So now for round six, we are going to be repeating exactly the same as round number five, just one half double crochet into every stitch around. So now here's round six done. Now for round seven, we are going to make some decreases to bring the pot in even more. So chain one, and now for the decrease, you're going to be going into the following stitch, making the first part of the half double crochet like this, and then you're going to keep all the loops on the hook, and then you're gonna go into the following stitch and pulling up a loop. And then you're going to be having four loops on the hook, now you're going to be yarning over and pulling through all the loops together. So this is how I do my half double crochet decrease. And now into, the following stitch work one half double crochet and into the next stitch work one half double crochet. And this is what you're going to be following all the way around. So into the next two work a decrease and then into the next two work one half double crochet. So now I'm going to repeat this all the way around and then I'll meet you at the end. So at the end here, you're gonna have two stitches left when you follow the pattern. So the previous two here, I have it's one half double crochet into the next two. So I'm going to finish into the last two with a decrease. So I'm going to now decrease into the last two. And then all you have to do now is two slip stitch into the first stitch, in which is the decrease. So this is how it's going to look like once you have seven rounds completed. Now for the finishing detail, you can choose if you wanna do single crochets all the way around, so you can just simply chain one and single crochet all the way around, and it's going to look like this. Or you can also do the crab stitch in which it looks like this. So for this other one, I'm going to show you how to make the crab stitch because the single crochets, it's very simple. You already know how to do it. So I'm going to show you something different for this other pot here. And so that you can see how it's going to look like. So to make the crab stitch, we work backwards. So you're going to chain one and make sure that when you chain one, it's not too tight. And we are gonna work backwards. So go into the next stitch. So we have this here in which it looks like a stitch, but let's not use that one. Let's go into the next one. So go into the next stitch backwards, go into the entire stitch, and then you are going to yarn under and not over like this. So yarn under, and then you're going to pull up a loop, and then you want to just pull it up so it's not too tight. Just pull it up a little bit. And then you're going to yarn over and pull through all the loops. And now you're going to repeat this all the way around. So go into the following stitch backwards, and then you're going to yarn under, pull up a loop, move it nice and up so it's leveled with all the rest, and also so that it's not too tight, and then yarn over and pull through. 
And now you're going to repeat this all the way around. It's very simple and it makes a super cute detail as well. So I'm here at the end, just gonna do my last crab stitch. And you can see if you have to make another one, maybe into this little space that we have skipped at the beginning, you can try and do one and see how it looks like. Just so that it covers that and then it's very seamless. So I'm gonna do it, there we go. Yeah, that looks pretty nice, right? So now we can cut off the yarn here, leaving a nice tail for the weave-in. We can now fasten off. And then you can just take this yarn to the back here and weave in. So what I like to do, I just go at the back of the next crab stitch here at the back. And then I take this yarn to the back, make sure that you don't pull too tight. Just make sure that it's really nice, the finishing detail here. And now I'm just gonna turn it here on the reverse and I'm going to weave in. So now you can simply just mold the pot around and have the shape that you want. What I like to do is I like to flatten this. This is the fourth round. Just flatten it down like this. And then you have this kind of shape. So this is what I like doing. And then I just mold it, these two last ones here, upwards, just so that it has this shape here. But feel free to mold it as you wish. That's why I love using t-shirt yarn because you can just mold it around as you wish. So here you can see how it looks like with the single crochets and the crab stitch. So you can choose the one that you want to do. Now, if you want to make a simpler paw, for example, like this one, you are going to be making rounds one, two, and three of this pot here. So one, two, and three. You are going to end up here into this section here. So the third one you're gonna be doing back loop only all the way around. And then from there, you can simply grow your paw as long as you want. I did two more rounds right on top of this one. So in total from the bottom, I did five rounds. And when changing colors, I did one, two, three, and four with cream, and then five and six with yellow. And then the last round, you can also choose if you wanna do single crochets or the crab stitch. So it's that simple. So now we are going to be playing around a little bit and I'm going to show you how to put this beautiful coaster set together. Isn't it so pretty seeing everything like this? I love it. I'm going to show you how it looks on every pot, but let's just put it together using the yellow one. So first I'm going to take the coasters and I'm going to use the five coasters. You can do up to six. I would say it fits really nicely up to six here, but you can try and see if you can add more. So I'm going to put one on top of the other, but halfway like this. And I'm doing light and dark, light and dark because I'm doing it colorful just like so side by side and then now you want to wrap them all around i'm just gonna turn this way so it's easier for me to do it so just wrap them around and try holding them together while you wrap them around and then i'm just gonna hold it so take one leaf and then you want to bring the sides in into the center like this just so that we make the leaf similar to a tulip leaf so it's a little bit more narrow as you can see and then you're going to put it with the flowers and hold that together and i like doing it where we have the edge of the coaster so i'm going to place this one here just hold it in place and then do the same with the other one Bring the sides in and then you can add the other one. And I like to do it one on each side like this. And now all you have to do is to add all this inside the paw. Then you can just organize it in place. And here you have your tulip vase the little flower put together and then when you pull you have the coasters how fun is this <gasps> look at that stop it 
stop everything. A little bit easier if you don't want to roll them together. Again, this is the most stunning thing ever. So let me show you on this other one, the other option you have. So you can simply just fold them in. So let's do the first one. And then all the others you can just wrap around the previous one. So like this, and then like so, just wrap it around. And then this other one. And then the last one. So you can do it something like this as well. And then the leaves will be the same. Just bring the sides in and put it on the sides. Do both. Just hold everything. Look at that. So simple and easy. And then you can place it inside the pot. So this is how it looks like with this little pot here. And let me show you with the other one on this one. So this is how it looks like with the beige. Look at that. I really like this pot because it's different. And you can also make this one a little bit longer, the same height as this other one, because this one I made it a little bit smaller, but you can make it a little bit longer too. I am already planning on making in different colors so I can see how it looks like, maybe pink, maybe orange. Let me know in the comments what color should I do next. Look at this one. I am obsessed. I love it. This has to be my absolute favorite out of all of the coaster sets that I've created. And I'm going to link all of them for you guys in the description if you want to also have a collection just like me. And now I want to take you with me and decorate the table for afternoon tea so that we can see this super cute little thing in action. Let's go. <laughs> So here's the table not ready for afternoon tea. Do you want to come over? <laughs> so I really hope you have enjoyed making this flower pot that turns into coasters. This time, tulip inspired. <laughs> I am actually obsessed. And if you end up making one, don't forget to tag me so I can see your beautiful creation and the colors you're going to be choosing for your project. I love seeing everything you guys do, so don't forget to tag me. And if you have enjoyed today's video, don't forget to leave your massive thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe here to the channel so you can watch more videos just like this one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! This is adorable. How stunning! <laughs>